What's up everyone, I'm Calamontos, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing a triple buff double B team in the Gala Cup that surprisingly worked a lot better than I was expecting as I was able to go positive in every single set, running Shadow Alone and Dugtrio in the lead, Vespican with both Poison Sting and Power Gem, which got buffed this season as the say swap, and Red Bombi with Fairy Wind as the closer. Now whilst the Bs were the main theme of this team, I have to say Shadow Alone and Dugtrio was definitely the MVP, and I would highly recommend giving it a try if you have one, even if like me you don't actually have very good IVs. Now with that being said, let's just get straight into the question of the day. What's the most underrated Pokemon you've used so far in the Galar Cup? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. As we go into the first battle, we need Shadow Alone and Dugtrio into a Shadow Quagsire. Obviously not a great lead matchup for us and a little bit tricky for us because of course they are going to be running Stone Edge but I'm able to swap and catch the first charge move. The opponent goes for the Aquatel there and they're going to come in with a Salazzle. Now of course this is not ideal for us but this is where Power Gem being slightly cheaper in energy is going to be pretty useful as Power Gem grabs a shield advantage. They do get a full Incinerate farm down but that's actually not that bad for us. They're going to come out with 80 energy but if the opponent does just go straight for a Poison Fang here, then I'm only going to have to tank a single Poison Fang. They go for the Poison Fang and now this will be another Poison Fang. So despite being debuffed, we are of course going to triple resist Poison there. So I let that go through and we come out with a Mud Bomb already loaded. So if they come back in with the Shadow Quagsire, we're going to fire off the Mud Bomb straight away and then I will stop immediately into a Bombi. The opponent actually lets that go through and they've got a Manda Buzz in the back. Now this is why I liked Rebombi today. Rebombi is able to tank an Airy Lace and of course we're resisting the Snarl damage, but these Dazzling Gleams are going to hit very hard up against Mandibuzz. So the first one grabs the final shield. The opponent will outpace me to the next charge move, but I've still got a shield intact. So going to use my final shield. They go for the Aerial Ace. We are one away from the next Dazzling Gleam. And Dazzling Gleam from this range is enough damage to take out the Mandibuzz. And I'm able to take that game. So GG set up over there into next battle, a bit of a tricky lead matchup for us, but of course these mod saps are also chunking, as well as taking big damage from those fire spins. I'm now going to swap, I stayed in for quite a while there, so that I could swap and catch a double resisted power whip onto my Vespaquin. And at this point of course I'm pretty certain that the opponent will be running Thunder as a coverage move on their Ferrothorn, but I'm actually going to use a shield here. I should be able to have a Thunder pretty comfortably. Vespaquin is quite bulky, a lot bulkier than most of the Pokemon that I use, but I realise if I just shield that up, over farm considerably, I'm going to come out with a power gem or very close to a power gem loaded for the nine tails when it comes back in So I go for one poison sting fire off the power gem power gem should be grabbing a shield from the opponent It does grab that shield and I realized I can probably outpace them to the next charge move as well So I'm gonna shield that up there and we do make it to the power gem before they make it to the next weather ball and At this point I'm going to grab the final shield snipe with my shadow alone and dog trio go straight for the mud bomb Mud bomb gets the KO and they've got a shadow galarian we in the back so two mud snaps and I'm already at the next mud bomb mud bomb gets the KO and I'm able to take that game so GG set up over there into next battle. We see Shadow Quagsire in the lead once again. And this time we're actually going to swap straight away, of course. The first game I did show that I tried to make a catch and I was successful. But you're going to see later on when I tried to make a catch and I wasn't successful, then that puts me at a huge disadvantage because they've just got a, such a significant energy advantage. That's just really difficult to overcome. Of course, Stone Edge, going to hit for double super effective. It will one shot us. So it's a very tricky matchup here. Of course, we are triple resisting the mud shot damage. So if I do double shield and I'm able to take them out with with the X scissors, then we're actually in a really good position, but you're going to see that when I do eventually land this next X scissor, X scissor will just barely not be enough damage to get the KO, so it's going to be very close, we need to resist the Poison Sting, farm them down, and we're just barely not able to do so, but of course, we do put Quagsire into range where we can just farm them down with either Pokemon, they're actually going to swap out into Mandibuzz there, so they didn't let the Quagsire go down, which means I can come in with my Rabombi, and we're not going to be punished because the opponent has already swapped, they're not able to swap out of this matchup, we go straight for Dazzling Gleam, and Dazzling Gleam actually doesn't quite get the KO this time around but that might be even better for me because now we can come in with the Doug Trio go for a resisted Mudslap farm down the opponent is going to come in with a Galarian Weezing once again and once again Weezing going to be straight in and straight out Mud Bomb gets the one shot that wasn't even a Shadow Weezing this time around but we're able to Mudslap farm down the Quagsire and I'm able to take that game 
So GG to up on there into the next battle. We see another fire type in the lead. So definitely a little bit worse for us just because these incinerates deal so much damage. What I could have possibly done is just gone for five mud snaps there and I would have put them into farm down range. But instead I grabbed the shield advantage, meaning I sacrifice one mud snaps worth of damage, which is pretty substantial, which means I'm definitely not going to be able to farm them down. At least with the Vesper Queen here, I might be able to swap into a Bombi and go for a Fairy Wind farm down as Fairy Wind is also neutral damage here. But I'm definitely going to double shield this as my Rebombi is very glassy. We are now going to swap into a bombie. Can we get the snipe with the fairy winds? Yes, we're just barely able to do so. They're going to come in with nine tails, and I throw on very poor timing. I'll be honest, I thought Dazzling Gleam would get the one shot, and it doesn't get the one shot, so definitely poor from, from my part there. But I can still come in with the Vesper Queen, go for two poison stings, fire off an Exizzer. And unfortunately, they've got Galarian Stunfisk in the back, so there's just nothing we can do here, unfortunately. Of course, everything we throw is going to be resisted. Rockside is going to be double super effective. It easily takes out Vesper Queen, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's top end there into next battle, another mud boy in the lead. We're going to say swap into Vesper Queen, and actually this isn't that bad for us as they come in with a Clefable. Now, of course, running Poison Sting, this is actually pretty good because we're dealing super effective damage. If we were running the Fury Cutter Fast Move, then that would be resisted. So much better for us now that we've got buff Poison Sting. We're going to go and fire off the x Exizzer. Exizzer doesn't quite get the KO, but the opponent must not be running Swift there. Otherwise, they probably could have thrown it. I'm sure they would have made it in time. So maybe running... Uh, Moonblast and Meteor Mash potentially. Either way, we're able to flip switch advantage. They come back in with the Gastrodon. They go for a Body Slam. Fine with us. We're going to come in with Robombi, and this will just be another Body Slam. Honestly, at some point, I should start shielding, but I'm not going to shield just yet. They come in with a Quick Attack Diggersby, and honestly, you'd think this is an awful matchup for us, but since they are running Quick Attack as the fast move, we are resisting that fast move pressure, whilst also dealing pretty big damage with these Mud Snaps, also generating energy fairly quickly as well. So, honestly, not that bad of a matchup. We can now shield this as the opponent will fire off the next charge move. They go for Scorching Sands, which is huge because now we can massively over farm here, farming two near back to back charge moves. We go for the Mud bomb the opponent actually just lets that go through i'm gonna bank a mud bomb then swap into a bomby i'm able to make it to the bug buzz in time bug buzz gonna grab the final shield and as long as we don't lag i can come in with my dog trio even if they farm up to back to back charge views it doesn't matter as a mud bomb will win cmp up against the gastrodon and mud bomb easily takes out the gastrodon from that range and i'm able to take that game So GG's top over there into the next battle, another bad lead leading into Quagsire. We are going to stay in here. This might be the matchup I was talking about where, yes, we swap into Vesper Queen, but now we're down on energy. This is a really tricky matchup here. Honestly, up against a non-shadow, maybe we could lift the Stone Edge there. I actually didn't look into the Sims before doing any of these battles. But either way, they're actually going to swap into a Drift Blim. And we're able to go for the Power Gem, dealing big damage. Vesquin also bulky enough to live an Icy Wind here. So I'm going to no shield this. And I'm now going to bait with an x -Izza. The opponent probably going to fight for switch advantage. We go for x -Izza, We grab the shield. The opponent commits to the farm down. But I'm able to make it to another Power Gem. And Power Gem is going to be no shielded. We take them out there. They come back in with Quagsire. And honestly, I couldn't afford to let the mud shot farm me down there because that would just be game over. So instead, I swap into a Rebombi. The opponent goes for an Aquatel there. Of course, Crunch would be resisted. I'm hoping to grab the final shield here, and we do grab that final shield. The opponent does get a big Poison Sting farm down. But we've still got play here. I'm going to wait out the switch clock, of course. I am switch locked, and they are going to be very spammy. They're going to throw the charge through, I think, after one poison sting. So we are going to see the opponent comes back in with the Quagsire. I'm going straight for the Mud Bomb. Mud Bomb does big damage. We can then swap, make the catch onto my Vesper Grin here. And this is perfect. They go for Mud Bomb. They get the KO. We can come back in with the Dug Trio. And we are just two away from the Mud Bomb. They were three away from an Aquatel. But we win CMP up against the Drapion. Mud Bomb will eventually connect and when it does it will take out the shadow drapion and i'm able to take that game So GG shot up over there into next battle. We see Diggersby in the lead. Now, I was going to stay in if it was Quick Attack, but then I realized they're running Mud Shots, so I'm going to swap out of there. But Mud Shots actually slightly better for the Vesper Queen, as of course, we are going to triple resist the Mud Shot damage. And these Fire Punches, yes, they're super effective, but as I mentioned already, Vesper Queen fairly bulky. We can actually live three Fire Punches reasonably comfortably. They won't be able to Mud Shot fire me down, which is actually very ideal for us. So I'm going to wait and throw on the CMP tie for the next Exorcist here. Exorcist will be coming through. It's going to be no shot. 
shield did. Actually, never mind, that was not CMP. But either way, we're going to no shield once again. Fire Punch does some decent damage there, but we are triple resisting the mud shot damage. I'm firing off another Exizer. Exizer is going to be no shielded, so I'm actually just going to snipe with my Dog Trio before they can react. We're able to get the mud stat farm down. They're going to come in with a Mana Buzz, and we are going to try and throw on the CMP tie. A little bit of stutter lag there, but we're able to throw the charge move. Iron Head is going to be no shielded. And at this point, I'm thinking I probably should shield this just because I've seen so many teams are very weak to the Doug Trio in the back. Once I got rid of their Mud Boy and the Manda Buzz, so I'm actually going to go and fire off another Iron Head. I can then swap, and I'm hoping that I've just caught a Dark Pulse here. And the opponent does go for the Dark Pulse, so that's huge for me. But they got Clefable in the back, and the opponent is just going to fire off a Swift straight away. I will live this, but unfortunately, what it does do is put me into perfect Fairy Wind farm down range. We're going to go straight for Dazzling Gleam here. Dazzling Gleam is going to connect. It does big damage, but they still get the farm down there, which is very unfortunate. At this point, I'm going to come in with the Vesquin. They do leave with a charge move loaded. So I have to just sacrifice the Vesquin here. Hopefully, we can make it to back-to-back -back moves with my Dog Trio. But I realized very quickly that actually they're just going to be able to fully snarl farm me down. Even if, I, even if I make it to back to back mud bombs there, mud bomb would not get the KO. I need a mud bomb, grab the shield, and then land the iron head. And that just wasn't going to happen. So unfortunately, we do just let the Doug Trio go down. But GG's to the opponent there into next battle. Another mud boy in the lead. And that's one thing I will say. Like, I lost a ton of leads with this team, but I'm still able to, came, to come back in a lot of these battles. So that's a pretty good sign that a team works well, even if on paper it doesn't look like it's very good. Like, we see a single Charizard, for example, and we're going to instantly lose. But either way, we are going to come in with the Vessel Queen. This time, I'm going to no shield. They actually go for Mirror Shot there. I'm not sure if they just didn't farm up to a potential Thunder there or if... Yeah, I think that was the case because, yeah, I, I would have probably shielded if that was a potential Thunder. But instead, they're going to go for Mirror Shots. This time, they do debuff our attack. Doesn't really matter. At this point, x will still get the KO. It does get the KO. The opponent comes back in with the Gastrodon, and this is fine. We can live a Body Sam pretty comfortably here. Even a second Body Sam will not be enough damage to get the KO. So once again, I'm just going to no shield. And honestly, I might make it to back-to-back -back x scissors before they can Mud Slap farm me down. As once again... Triple resisted mud snaps there, not dealing much damage whatsoever, and we are able to make it to two uh, X scissors up against this Gashadon, getting them deep into the other health range. We're now going to come in with the Ribombi. At this point, might use the shield here. We are going to shield. They go for the body sand, that's fine, and they're going to come in with a Whimsicott now. This is a little bit tricky for us as they are resisting the ground type damage, but I'm able to make it to the mud bomb. I'm going for mud bomb here, grabbing a final shield, and they throw on CMP, and that is literally perfect for us. The opponent goes for C bomb that actually takes us out there but it doesn't really matter at this point the opponent will fire off a charge move depending on what they throw i can over farm a lot if they go for moon blast which they do so we're going to farm up to nearly 100 energy here i don't want to get too low to the point where actually a body stand will take me out so we take them out with the bug bars i'm able to make it to another bug bars up against the gastrodon so the opponent just concedes the match so GG's top out there into next battle. We see Diggersby in the lead once again. And this time they are running the quick attack as the fast move. So that's perfectly fine with me. I'm going to stay in this. I'm going to shield the first move as the opponent goes and full sends the Scorching Sands. So a lot of times Diggersby was running Scorching Sands and Hyper Beam, meaning they don't have that bait move to throw at all. So I'm going to swap. I'm hoping that I've just caught a Scorching Sands onto my Vessel Queen. And we have that is triple resisted. That does almost no damage. The opponent's going to bank a ton of energy before swapping into a Drapion, but that's absolutely okay. We can go for these X's as spamming them fairly quickly as well. I think two X's will be enough damage from this range to get the KO, or two more X's, I should say, as we've already landed one. But either way, you're gonna fire off the next X's. X's is going to be no shielded by the opponent, and I'm just gonna throw the next one straight away. So they've already shown Sludge Bomb. I don't know if that means they're running Architel or Crunch as a secondary charge move, but either way, we get the KO there. They're going to come in with a Shadow, a load of Ninetales. We're going straight for X's, unfortunately not making it to a Power Gem, so we have to settle for the Resistant move, but we come in with a Dog Trio, go for the Mud Bomb, we're then going to swap, catch the Charge Move onto a Bombi here. I'm basically just fully sacrificing this thing. I realized that my Dog Trio is going to be my win condition here, and we're just going to let the next move go through. The opponent goes for Weather Ball, Weather Ball gets the KO. We come back in with Dog Trio, and the opponent and it swaps back into their Diggers B, and that might be a huge mistake here, as the opponent goes to Scorching Sands, and we're able to go for a full Mud Slap farm down, coming out with the Iron Head loaded, and of course Iron Head, gonna be double super effective, it easily takes out the Ninetales, and I'm able to take that game. 
So GG set up over there. Into next battle, we see a Shadow Ferrothorn in the lead. So actually, this is a positive matchup for us, but I'm going to swap and catch the Power Whip onto my Vespicoon once again. The opponent goes for Power Whip, double resisted. They're now going to come in with a Shadow Quagsire. This also isn't that bad for us. Since we did swap out and bait it out here, we don't want to see it up against our Dug Trio. Of course, Stone Edge still going to hit for double super effective. It will still easily one-shot us, but I'm going to shield that up there. And you can see already that we have got them into the other health range. I'm hoping in the two-shield scenario, we can just go for these Exorcists and get the KO this time around. But instead, I swap into my Dug Trio. I'm thinking, I've just caught a Stone Edge. And no, the opponent goes for Aquatella there. Huge mistake. And that might just cost me the game here. I didn't need to do that. It was such an unnecessary catch attempt and now because they went for the Arctur as well I'm just completely thrown off on their counts I, I've, I've no idea what's going on anymore I'm just panicking we're going for the Exorza Exorza grabs the shield we're gonna go for another Exorza here Exorza is going to unfortunately not get the KO and again we're swapping we're making the catch we didn't need to do that and now Robombi is very low in HP already and Sakuratil does a lot of damage up against Robombi Robombi not the bulkiest Pokemon ever they come back in with the Ferrothorn I'm gonna fire off a Bug Buzz Bug Buzz gets the KO but they've got Galarian Weezing in the back and unfortunately if we just kept our Dug Tree alive we'd have been very comfortable in this game but I made several unnecessary catches for no reason whatsoever and as a result unfortunately we're gonna get swept by the wheezing as they go for the overheat taking out the best we win and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG stop over there into next battle another mud boy in the lead honestly it might be worthwhile running like Vespiquin in the lead here because these mud boys are very problematic for our Doug Trio lead but either way going for the Exorza the opponent's now going to swap into Mandibuzz and this is actually okay with Power Gem we can probably flip this in the Zero Shield scenario as two Aerial Aces don't quite do enough damage to get the KO and with a slight energy advantage I think we can make it to two Power Gems and an Exorza before they make it to the next charge but either way I'm going to no shield the next Move as they fire off the aerial ace. We're gonna go for one extra poison sting, throwing on good timing, going for the power gem. Power gem is gonna be no shielded, and we are able to make it to the Exorcist on CMP. Honestly, I prefer if they shield this up, but the opponent lets that go through. Let's see what they want to do here. They're gonna come in with a Galarian Weezing, so we're definitely just gonna stay in, let them take us out there. Come in with the Doug Trio. We're now gonna swap into a Bombi, and once again, it's just a sacrificial job for the Rabombi. There's no point in keeping it alive here. I realize mud slap farming the down is going to be my win condition so again just going to no shield the opponent goes for school this time around absolutely fine with me we come back in with the dog trio they do make it to a charge move but that's okay we can just shield this up i think the galara and wheezing already has a move loaded but they just give a full mud slap in for free so gonna shield up the brutal swing there two more mud slaps and we're able to get the farm down up against the wheezing and i'm able to take that game so GG stop point there into next battle. You can see a load of nine tails in the lead, and they are running powder snow. So this is a little bit tricky for us, just because of course it's gonna hit for super effective damage up against my Vesper Queen, and also pretty big damage here up against my Dug Trio. So we're actually gonna go for the Mud Bomb here. Mud Bomb should get the KO anyways, and then I'm actually gonna swap into my Vesper Queen. And despite being super effective, it's gonna do less damage than it would do up against my Dug Trio. And as well, because we do make uh, one Poison Sting as we swap there, we're able to outpace them to the Exorcist. Exorcist grabs a shield. And at this point, I'm just happy to let the Vespian go down. We're gonna tank the Weather Ball there. We're gonna come in with the Rabombi, and they should be in range where we can just go for a Fairy Wind farm down. And this energy is pretty useful unless they've got something like a Toxapex in the back. So let's see the opponent's gonna come in with a Drift Blim. We're gonna go straight for the Dazzling Gleam here. Dazzling Gleam will connect. It will deal big damage, and it actually puts them into Fairy Wind farm down range. The opponent's gonna come in with a Drapion, and at this point, this is game over. We're already at the Mud Bomb here. We're gonna shield up the Aquatel. I'm gonna go for one. One extra mud slap just for the sake of it to make sure I throw it on good timing and my bomb of course super effective easily takes out the Drapion and I'm able to take that game. So GG stop point there into next battle, another Gastrodon in the lead. So gonna say swap into Vespigrin, and here is a Toxapex. Now, this is why I was running Vespigrin as a say swap, because I was thinking if we use Robombi as a say swap and we're met with a Toxapex, that's just gonna be instantly game over. At least we can hit for neutral damage with these power gems. They're really not doing that much damage, but the opponent will at least have to throw a charge weave to get rid of us. So that is at least something here. We're gonna no shield this as the opponent is gonna go for the sludge wave. Sludge wave does big damage, and it does put us into farm down range, which is unfortunate, but we can go for another power gem power gem will also put them into like maybe two mud saps before we farm them down here they will make it to a brine honestly shout out alone and dog trio especially with my poor ivs 
is probably not going to tank a brine there. So we do shield that. They come in with Amanda Buzz, and we've seen already several times where Bombi actually can hold its own in this matchup. But unfortunately, we are down a shield. So I don't think we will be able to take this game here unless the opponent, for whatever reason, just no shields this. And the opponent actually does no shield. We're going to come in with the, well, they're going to come in with the Gastrodon. We're going straight for the Bug Buzz. I need to get a defense drop here. And unfortunately, we don't. So they get a full mud sap farm down. You can see the mud saps up against our Dug Trio are absolutely chunking. There's no point shielding here. They will reach back to back charge moves. So I'm just going to allow them to fully mud sap farm it down. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. So GG to open there into the next match. We can see a Shadow Machamp in the lead. So gonna say swap into our Vesper Queen and we're met with a Shadow Quagsire. So we've seen this matchup several times, but this opponent isn't even gonna farm up to a potential Stone Edge. So it's a very easy no shield for me. You should definitely at least farm up to the Stone Edge because that would very, very easily grab my shield there as I'm pretty much gonna get one shot by a double super effective charge move. But now we can just spam these exorcists here. This time I think they did actually farm up to a potential Stone Edge, so I will shield this time around. The opponent does just go for an Octotel again, so at this point I'm thinking they probably don't have Stone Edge, so gonna go for the Exes. I actually undercharge that, the opponent shields that up, but it's just gonna be another Aquatel, so we can just let this go through. Aquatel will get us fairly low, but that's okay. We're gonna go and fire off another Exes here. This time we will just fully charge it. Exes gets the KO. They're gonna come in with a Malamar, and we're going straight for Exes here. Exes will, of course, hit for double super effective damage. It will grab the final shield. I'm actually just going to allow them to farm us down. I'm going to come in with my Doug Trio. It's actually just fully sacrificed here, realizing it's pretty useless as they go for a superpower there. They also had the Machamp, of course. We're now going to come in with Robombi. I'm definitely going to shield this. The opponent goes for Rockside there, which means I now can just go straight for a Bug Buzz. Bug Buzz, despite being resisted damage up against a Shadow Machamp from this range, will definitely get the KO. And then, of course, we're going to resist the typical charge moves from the Malamar, so we should be fine here. The opponent will fire off a charge move. They go for the foul play. We do tank that, of course, and we're able to make it to a Bug Buzz. And, of course, Double super effective damage. I didn't actually need to charge that at all there. I probably could have just fully no bubbled it. It still would have got the KO and I'm able to take that game. But GG to up there into the next battle. We can see a Galarian wheezing in the lead and they're staying in. So they are probably very weak to the ground typing in the back. So I'm actually going to shield this here. The opponent then swaps into a Quagsire. So once again, we don't have the best response to a Quagsire. So we go for the Mud Bomb. Then we swap into our Vesper Queen and we might end up losing switch advantage here but I think we're still going to be okay. They go for the Stone Edge. They full send it. I will be able to make it to back-to-back -back Xs before they make it to the next Stone Edge. But of course, if they do shield one of those, then we're going to be in trouble. They do shield one of those. We're now going to fire off the next Xzer. Xzer is going to connect this time around, but they will definitely outpace me to the next charge move. At this point, a Stone Edge will definitely take us out here, but unfortunately, we just had infinite lag, and I'm going to cut to when I basically close the app. I did wait for like five plus minutes because uh, I waited for the game to like, the, the, the timer to run out there before coming back in, and eventually you're gonna see that when I do come back in to the game, which I will cut to eventually, uh, unfortunately, we just get an error. So yeah, I don't really know how that battle would have panned out. Maybe we could have pulled it back. We did look to be in a pretty tricky situation. Hopefully for the opponent, they did at least get credited with a win there because we didn't. But either way, GG's to the opponent there into the next battle. We're gonna see a Gastrodon in the lead. So once again, not ideal for us, but we're baiting out Amanda Buzz. And this time we've got such a huge energy advantage. So gonna go straight for Power Gem. Power Gem does connect, does some decent damage there. The opponent's actually going to go for a Dark Pulse, which doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. I mean, it might actually do more damage than an Aerial Ace. I don't know. Aerial Ace, not the best move there. Dark Pulse is a pretty decent move. But either way, going to no shield once again. I know I can live the Snarl damage reasonably comfortably here. And the opponent's actually going to swap into Nine Tails. So I'm going to go a far off the Power Gem. Power Gem is going to be no shielded. And now we can come in with the Dog Trio, get the Snipe with the Mud Slap damage. They come back in with their Manda Buzz. And I am just barely able to make it to an Iron Head, despite the stutters that that we're seeing on screen. Ironhead gets the KO. They come back in with Gastrodon, and we should be absolutely fine now. All I have to do here is double shield. I don't care what they throw. The opponent actually goes for Earth Power, possibly fishing for a debuff to our defense, and they do get the debuff there, meaning that by the time they make it to back-to-back -back Body Sams, they might actually be able to take us out, but we also get a defense drop with the Bug Buzz there. I'm going to shield the next move, and I should just be able to outpace them anyway, so this point, going to stay in, go for the Bug Buzz, number two, and Bug Buzz with the defense drop or without it, we'll get the KO up against the Gastrodon and I'm able to take that game. 
So GG set up over there into possibly the final battle of this video. Once again, leading into Diggersby. The opponent's going to say swap into a Drift Blim. And honestly, we don't really have a response to Drift Blim, which is actually kind of crazy considering Drift Blim is pretty common in this meta. We didn't really see many of them, at least as a say swap. Uh, we saw a few of them as an answer to my Vespican say swap. But either way, we go for the Dazzling Gleam. And that does big damage. And that's actually not that bad for us. We can now come in with the Vespican. I'm hoping I can just tank this and then go for a farm down here. They go for Icy Wind. Icy Wind is going to unfortunately mean that we... Oh, never mind. We do get a farm down there. But then I swap out immediately. And that's a huge mistake. I should have just gone for a Power Gem straight away there. Could have grabbed the shield or put them into Mindset Farm down range. Either would have been fine. But unfortunately now, we basically just give them infinite farm there. And this is going to be game over. We're going to go for the Power Gem. Power Gem gets shielded. There's no point shielding here. They can just farm me down. The opponent goes for a Triple Axel there. Triple Axel gets the KO. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's top opponent, that apparently that was not the last battle. This is the last battle here as we lead into Orangaroo. So I'm going to swap into my best win. I tried to catch maybe a Brutal Swing or, I don't know, a Trailblaze or something. But either way, the opponent is going to come in with the Drift Blim. So here it is again, this time as the counter swap to my... Vespaquin. We can just go for back-to-back -back power gems here. First one goes unshielded. Second one is going to be shielded. But I should, once again, still be able to live another charge move. So, going to no-shield this. The opponent even full sends the Shadow Ball, but we still live that. We're able to make it to another power gem. Power gem is going to get the final shield from the opponent. We can swap back into a Dark Trio. Go straight for the Iron Head here. Iron Head is going to be no shield, of course. All shields are down on the opponent's end there. The opponent does have a lot of energy on their Orangaroo, so I'm actually going to no shield. Brutal Swing does get the KO, but we can come in with our Rebombi. And Rebombi is, of course, going to resist the typical charge moves from our Angry, but we are fairly glassy, so I think I'm going to shield anyways. The Go for Brutal Swing there, which would have been resisted, wouldn't have done much damage. But either way, I can just go and fire off a Bug Buzz. Bug Buzz gets the KO, and they've got Malamar in the back. So, of course, a Bug Buzz will easily get the KO here. We're going to start to charge up, and then I realize, actually, we don't need to. Bug Buzz still gets the one shot, and I'm able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shout outs at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day